Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Mary at First Sight Season 13, Episode 14 recap in this video. Oh my God. We've been expecting Hurricane K to show up, amongst other things, but we'll unpack all of this. But before we do, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications. If you like the video, smash that like button and drop a comment down in the comment section below. So we got a lot to unpack in this particular episode. It was definitely something that the previews of the season has been waiting to show us. So let's jump into this. So uh, they're at the couple's retreat. Um, we're winding down to the final two weeks of this season. And we're going to start out first with Mirla and Gil. We start from least to most in regards to things to unpack. Um, we really didn't get a whole lot with Mirla and Gil. Just the fact that it seems like Gil is getting a little bit tired of her brattiness. And he's being very vocal about how he feels. And I said this in earlier episodes is how long is he going to tolerate some of the things that she say and that she does. Now, I got to give it to Mirla because she has made huge strides when it comes to their marriage. Because as we remember, she wasn't budging on anything at all. But she realized, <clears throat> excuse me, she realized that, you know, with her wanting to make this marriage as solid as possible and seeing the type of husband that she has, she don't want to get that up. And I think about four episodes ago, she was telling Gil, we're not getting a divorce. The thing is, is that there's still a part of Mirla that still exists. And certain things like her not wanting to be at the barn that they did the retreat at. And even when they went horseback riding, she was like, oh, I wish it could be a little bit longer. And Gil was like, man, I mean, can you ever be happy with what you get? So, I know, and the thing is, I will say she really hasn't put up any walls anytime he bring these things to his to her attention, but um, she still got to work on that. I mean, it's been six weeks. So, um, one thing I like I always talk about with uh, this show and with other shows is I look for the progress. She definitely gets credit for the progress that she made. The question is is the work that Gil put in in the beginning, is he starting to digress? And that was my concern because sometimes that can get a little bit tiring when you're around someone. And he even said it himself, the things, how she feel affects his energy. And he does not like that about himself because when she's negative, his energy is impacted. So hopefully they can figure that out. All right, let's talk about these two. So we have Jose and Rachel. They have just been lovey-dovey. We really don't have too much for them this episode. Um, they didn't give us a lot of airtime for them last episode either. They had that big blowout about, I think it was in episode 11. But for the most part, Rachel and Jose has also been making strides. Now, I know a lot of folks don't like Jose, but he seems like he's all in and working this whole thing out with his wife. And that's what you look for. You know, again, progression. I like the fact that um, Rachel is keeping it light, keeping it fun. I know that, you know, in the beginning, you know, it was me independent, independent. She, those two have become more interdependent lately. Um, and the thing is, is that like, uh, Rachel said toward the end of the episode, and I think even Jose said this to agree with them. I mean, to agree with her is that even if we do have ups and downs in our relationship, this is where we know how to work through them. And it was so crazy. They were voted as the first couple to have children because they always kissing and hugging all over each other. But um, I see good things for them. I know what some of the spoilers say, but I also seen some things with these two in the last few weeks. So, 
you know, I'll wait to the end of the season to talk more about that or after the season, but I really like to see, you know, where these two can progress and where they can grow together. I mean, they obviously worked through that big spat, which I, you know, I think that was orchestrated. But anyway, they say it wasn't, so I'm just going to go with it. But it's just nice to see that these two are really working through uh, their relationship and making strides and a lot of progress. So kudos to them. We haven't seen that controlling streak lately come out of uh, Jose, but we'll see. So let's talk about these two. Oh boy, Johnny and Bao. Now, Johnny is just, he's just straightforward. I, you know, when I found out he's a Leo. One thing about Leos is that they have to be the center of attention and bows the Taurus. I don't even know why they put these two together. You know, even though she's trying to be loyal, she even cooked at this retreat, which was interesting since, you know, Johnny claims that the girl never cooks, but it was nice to see that uh, Johnny, she cooking today. But Johnny is blunt, straightforward, you know. I really don't want to be here. We ain't sleeping in the same rooms. All of that. And, I mean, that included them splitting this whole thing with uh, Brett and Ryan in sleeping rooms and things like that. The girls got two separate rooms, and the guys had to split the one room. We'll talk about that later. But Johnny needs to move on. He There's no perfect person that's going to match up to what he's looking for. He's searching for this pipe dream. I've said this in the previous episode. That person in your head don't exist. And that's the same thing that uh, Pastor Cal told him. It's like you need to put that person, bury that person, put that person to rest. But, you know, we'll talk about uh, Ryan in a little bit, but these two couples are in the same boat. And Bao is... She's trying. Now, I will say, I'm glad she spoke up for herself. And she was talking about how she saw what I think her mom went through and, you know, the abusive speech. And she was like, when I get older, I'm never going to go through that. And then now she's in a relationship and she see things differently because you have on rose colored glasses. Yeah, she's been trying to work through it. And the thing is, I'm all about working through relationships, but both people have to do it. I am not a fan, and as they call Johnny this drama queen here, because that's exactly what he is, I'm not a fan of a one-sided working relationship. And it was interesting, the whole scene, which we'll talk about Michaela and Zach, Bow was being real nosy. She was uh, all up in the business. But, you know, she was also a person that was trying to mediate and console. You know, I found that to be pretty interesting because she was telling people what was going on. And she was really nice to Michaela a lot, too. Now, I will say after the whole Michaela and Zach scenario... It seemed to kind of bring a, a sense of calm to some of the couples. And that was the, with uh, Johnny and Bao as well. Um, I saw that in Brett and Ryan, which we'll talk about them next. But I don't know, maybe it was a little bit of a wake-up call that they start to appreciate what they do have, whatever's remaining in their relationship. But it seemed a little bit of a, a shift with, I mean, Johnny, they was like, well, let's just get through it, you know, and I guess they said, well, you know, we don't have to go the route that, you know, Zach and Michaela went, but man, we can, you know, be cordial and get through the process. So, you know, honestly, I think that's what they need to do. They need to be able to, you know, move on from this and we'll see what happened the next couple of weeks. Now we got Brett and Ryan. Now this whole situation, uh, you know, Brett was trying to talk to him and look like he was just not interested. I mean, Ryan is not here at this moment. He's not here. And I mean, it, the whole situation turns into this double talk of a conversation, you know, and I saw a clip on Instagram that Married at First Sight, a Lifetime posted how they had compared him to Zach. Zach from Zach and Mindy's coupling from a few seasons back with the whole word salad situation. Because it's like, dude, 
Oh, and by the way, I'm glad that they came together for her dog and gave her the little sparklings and the cookies. So that was cool. Kind of cheer her up, especially this is probably the one time she actually need her dog, you know, for companionship. But back to the whole Ryan situation. I mean, this guy is the type of person that he rather be passive aggressive than be direct. And Brett is like, look, I need you to come clean and tell me what's up. You saying one thing with your actions and then a different thing with your words. That's going to confuse the hell out of somebody. I mean, if your actions is saying, oh, yeah, I want to be with you. But your mouth, where your mouth is saying, oh, yeah, maybe we can work this out. But your actions is saying something different. What the heck you think going to happen? And. I mean, even Brett himself said, you know what? I think I do need to work on me just being straightforward and not expecting someone to read my actions to find out what I'm thinking. Dude, we can't read your mind. And even when um, Ryan said, oh, yeah, I was willing to sleep with in the room with her. I mean, Johnny even gave that dude the side eye. And Brett had to call him out. Like, look, how are you going to tell those other folks that... Oh, we're going to be sharing a room. when we ain't even sharing a room at the house. And then she was like, when I try to call you out, this is what you do. You do all this double talk and sidestep and you should look at my actions and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, and he's trying to remain his composure. That's the one thing about being on this show. For people that obviously have watched this show, of course, the cameras are going to look for a crazed reaction. And I honestly think that Ryan is trying to keep him because he keeps saying, you know, now we're creating a scene. We're creating a scene. And she's like, what scene? Nobody's watching. And I'm thinking like uh, America's watching. So I'm wondering if he's trying to be so composed that he doesn't make himself look like the villain because this guy does not want in. He does not want to be in this relationship. He, whatever it is, he's not into this girl. And I mean, she's a pretty girl, but there are a lot of pretty people that people are not into. And those same pretty people are not into other people. So, you know, I do hear people like, oh my God, he ain't all that. She's a pretty girl. Everybody don't, it isn't into everybody. And I mean, if we be honest, that's the situation. Now, I'm not saying this is the right way to go about it. I think he needs to be honest with her. But if he's not into her, why lie to her? Why fake the funk? We had enough of that in previous seasons. So, only thing I would suggest with, with Ryan is that you need to tell this girl, look, this is what we're doing. I, I, I think we just go ahead and get a divorce at the decision day. Call it and we'll get through the next two weeks. This ain't going nowhere, and we can keep it moving. That's what he needs to do. If he's not into her, he's not into her. That don't mean she's a pretty, not a pretty person, and that don't mean he's a bad dude. Some people are just not interested in other people. It is what it is. But they're the ones after the, another couple that had a revelation with that whole situation and they tend to have a little bit of shift in their relationship i'm like dang did zach and michaela scare the crap out of johnny and bow and brett and ryan because they had a little bit of shift they kind of i guess one of them said they appreciate the fact of where they are at this point and i'm like you're really not anywhere but i guess because it's not a situation like what they saw with zach and michaela they appreciate that position so let's talk about and unpack Zach and Michaela. So these two, uh, excuse my French, are hella confusing to me. Um, obviously we're getting bits and pieces of the conversation. Um, now they started out coming on to this episode saying. We worked it out. We had to talk the night before, and we're in a good place. And Michaela was talking about how she is back in love again, and Zach's face says otherwise. And it's like, this this whole situation really ignited from the moment go with the whole miscommunication with the dog and Zach taking him out and not coming back and she freaking out and, you know, 
her calling him a I'm an MF and liar and all this stuff. And it's just been downhill ever since. They try to put themselves in this place of delusion where, oh yeah, we're working, we're working, we're happy, we're gonna love, we're back in the in the good spot. And then the bottom drops out. What really sent this whole thing over is Zach saying that let's get a divorce at the end of the season and then work on a dating relationship afterward. That's what that what he's saying. He's saying in this position of being in front of cameras on this TV show, this is not a good situation to try to foster a relationship. And Michaela is like, uh, I'm the same person whether I'm going to be in a relationship on TV or off screen in a dating relationship if I'm with you. And then when she asked him, you know, do you want to be married or are you ready for marriage? He like, yeah, are you ready for marriage with me? He was like, not in this situation. And I think she missed that part of it. Now, I'm not saying that they should divorce and then try to do some dating relationship. Not at all. I honestly think both of them need therapy. Both of them. Um, she got to deal with her abandonment issues, which we'll talk about that in a minute. A minute. And then he is a very high, strong, emotional person. Anywho. But, I mean, it took a toll where she really kind of spazzed out. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. She ran off, threw her arms up. And Zach is like, this is exactly what I'm talking about. But the offer he put on the table, it just did not make sense. I understand where he was saying, like, let's get off these cameras. Let's just scrap the marriage and just start over from just dating. And the two are not connecting. She's seeing it like, wow, if we can't do this in a marriage, why would we be doing this dating? The problem is her reaction to it. And then her reaction sets him off because he's so sensitive and emotionally reactive that he can't deal with her reactions. And so they both just react off of each other. They react off of each other for whatever reason, whatever issues he got going on. He's like, pretty much, you know what? I just need to leave. How about I just leave? How about I just leave? And so he left her sitting there. She started crying. Then we see Bao come over and say, you know, you have to just take a step back and rethink this and go back and fix your marriage it's not going to be that bad. And I'm like, Val, you got your whole situation going on over there. And I find it interesting because she seemed to be very helpful for Michaela. But I don't know if you guys watched Unfiltered. I think it was last week or the week before. And Michaela was not a Bow fan. So I don't know what. It's a lot of missing parts with this whole thing. Anywho. So they got to this whole, uh, this game that they had and... There was this question about being petty, and she owned her pettiness. She said she's a handy bee, and she was very vocal about it. And I would destroy things, and da 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 da. And he was like, I ain't feeling it. And he carried that energy right into that bedroom, which led into another level of intensity with these two. So then. He's like, well, why did you, we already discussed this. So when he said that, did they agree to date and end the marriage and date after the whole season? And then she changed it. And then she was like, why we got to do this? And then Zach is like, okay, well, if we ain't doing this at all, as we originally planned, why don't I just leave? And she was like, yeah, go get out. Blah, 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 blah. I get a ride by myself. And then he was like, no. I don't want you to ride by yourself. You're going to need a ride home. She was like, no, 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 Get out, get out, go, go, go. So he proceeds to say, okay, fine, I'm out. She calls her sister to let her know what's going on. And she told him he's going to leave. She told the sister that she's going to leave. He's going to leave me here and I don't have a way home. And 
he was like, well, 10 minutes ago, you just said to leave. And she was like, I didn't say that. Now, that is gaslighting. And it's interesting that, you know, the show replayed that rewind and showed her saying what she's saying. When somebody gives, both of them are given altered realities. But right in that moment is a gaslight. Because when somebody says something and then the conversation go on and then you call them on what they said and they was like, well, wait a minute, I didn't say that. Oh, yeah. Well, it goes even further. She like, I don't want you to leave. At first, it was like, leave, get out, get out, get out. No, don't leave. It's late at night. It's 11 o'clock. And he's like, you know what? I can't do this with you. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. And she decides to take his suitcase from him and bring it back. And she was like, remember, I'm petty. I'm, I'm, I'm effing petty. Remember that. I mean, it's... It's just escalated as they, as the other, um, you know, couple said, escalated. He went and got his stuff. He walked outside. The other couples were out there. You know, Michaela come running out there trying to stop him. Then she started yelling at Ryan, get in the car, get in the car. You need to get, go with him. And Ryan was like, I can't stop him from going nowhere. He's a grown man. What am I supposed to do? I mean, it just got out of control. It just it just escalated. And this was one of my favorite couples at the beginning of the season. And then she goes, once he leaves, she her reaction was to go and start breaking glass, turning over tables, pushing furniture around. I mean, it was it was just it was intense to watch. It was cringe worthy. And then the whole screaming, telling people to get out, slamming doors, uh, you know. And, of course, it rattled the other couples, you know, that they had a roundtable discussion. Bow had to break it all down and give all the deets. But, you know, it definitely put something on the minds of the other couples. And I'm assuming, you know, obviously Michaela is missing. And as uh, Gil said, now there were eight. So... Look like next week they're holding hands and Michaela is saying, I love you. I, I'm like, how toxic can this whole situation get? And this is where I, I tend to draw the line with the show. It's like, at what point do you say, okay, for your mental health, we need to let you off this show. Or say, we won't air this stuff, but it's drama. They need the ratings. You get more ratings, you get more endorsements. When you get more endorsements, you get more money for the network. So... But it's at the expense of the mental health of these participants. But they signed a contract too. So I don't know. I don't know. So let me know what you guys think. Drop, sound off. I was going to say drop off your comments. But sound off in the comments. Do you think that they should have let these couples off the hook and just focus on the last two weeks of what's remaining. I know everybody got to make a decision. We were, we were recovering from season 12. Now we got 13. It's getting worse. It's been this crazy since season 10 with Brandon and Taylor and, you know, all of that stuff. And then, you know, we kind of got a break in season 11. We had a little bit there, but then 12, with the whole situation with, you know, Paige and Chris and now season 13. It's like, come on, guys. But I hate, you know, to see that this is not working. All right. So let me know your thoughts. Like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.